um, Melbourne Grammar School, uh, the main campus is kind of landlocked location, as you can imagine. It's got more heritage controls on it than, than any other site in Melbourne, I think. And the little music school is sort of a, just off campus. And the school bought um, Bromby House, which is the bit on the right, uh, in 1959. And Mockridge, Staley and Mistral built this beautiful little butterfly-roofed mid-century modern building um, in 1960 in the backyard. And that, that became the music school, effectively. So for the last 20 odd years, I've been master planner for the school and th this, the place here just got completely run down and, you know, a building in the sixties kind of not really well built at the time. And so the school, we went through this process of um, how to resurrect the, the thing and, and create a new music school in a, in a right, effectively a, a residential street. And what's beautiful about this, building from that time, as you can see, is the sort of modesty of it. Just fantastic thing about mid-century architecture, I think. Uh, and so uh, this is photos from 1960. You can just see what, you know, what how, how times have changed. <laughs> um, and the Bromby House, which is, which was a really the music master's residence and, and on the ground floor was used for music teaching as well. And it had got pretty much run down. So here we have, I mean, it's in a heritage overlay, so there's an awful lot of work done to, uh, with with the city of Melbourne uh, around heritage values for the site. And you can see on the right, there's the plan of the building where it, it's classic sort of thing. It started out as a single story farmhouse. Um, the block plan at the bottom shows that. And then various additions and things happened over time, which is just typical. Site plan, you can see where it is relative to the main school campus. Uh, and then we do feasibility work where it's a classic example of for music, small number of lots of small number of rooms and then bigger items that didn't fit in either the, the Mockridge building or, or the house. So this basically meant an infill, a two story infill that, that mid green colour um, had to fit somewhere between the two buildings. And the strategy for that was, well, there's no way that it could be a two story building because it would have just blocked out the whole thing, windows and everything. So we pushed it into the ground. And so the lower level is two um, beautiful new music studios, which would, would have otherwise never fitted anywhere else. And that's the kind of excavation. So it's kind of tricky building. You can see the condition of the Mockridge building in the background there, it had got really poor um, in every respect. And so it's a pretty intense kind of plan, but basically the existing rooms all get modified into uh, teaching, tuition spaces, rehearsal rooms. And then the infill building deals with all the other stuff that doesn't really fit in the other buildings, which is uh, new stairs, lifts, connecting lobbies, a new breezeway, um, connecting the pieces together. And then upstairs is a beautiful music studio uh, with a bridge link um, to the lift for transporting all the musical instruments. So and you can see here, the idea is very much the, the, the kind of, how do you join um, a 1960s mid-century architecture with a you know, mid 19th century building and so we've adopted this idea of the extension of the breezeway and a kind of because the building has been set back from the street it creates this rather beautiful little forecourt space um, and in the background is just lanterns and and the bridge element and so that's the condition of the house when we found it with all the outbuildings and bits and pieces the interior of the house was shambolic um the, the music master had sheep for some reason i don't, I don't know <laughs> um yeah, anyway, he's a pretty eccentric guy. Um, and then you can see the state of the Mockridge building here, just really run down, dark, and um, but you could see in that really beautiful bones. So that's the setting of the building relative to the campus and the city, pretty extraordinary. And then the, the sense of it in the street. Um, and I, I find this, and, and I think people have reacted well to this, the idea that you know a, a, a school building can still breach between um, the architectures of, of residential and yet it doesn't feel like a house particularly, but it, it does fit the street. Um, and then the restored building, it just looks absolutely beautiful. Um, simple architecture of this period, you gotta love it. Um, and likewise with a house of, you know, really uh, a very careful returning of the house to, to its simple origins. Um, and, you know, basically this sort of beautiful layer at the street, this the breezeway element, which is, you know, protected but semi-open 
with the lockers for the students and a little ramp that connects the different levels of the building. And on the bottom there is the original stair from the Mockridge building and the, and the entrance area. Uh, then there's digital recording spaces. Again, you can see how beautiful that floating slatted timber ceiling is with the, with the ring of um, highlight windows. Um, and then the main studio itself. Um, uh, and you know, one of the hardest things was probably the air conditioning. So on the, on the left-hand side, there is the, what we call a fat wall, this thing. Uh, in which all the air conditioning and all the services are run so that you can keep the sense of the floating ceiling. So there's a lot of work being done, you know, like double and triple glazing, extra insulation, um, you know, to make the thing, because it's in a residential area, plus, you know, the requirements for acoustics within the space. So here we are downstairs um, in the two uh, really beautiful panel, timber panelled interiors for um, small performances and rehearsal um, and teaching. And then the house itself, really fine house. Like we didn't have to do much. Basically, it's a um, fit for purpose. Was just really reusing the rooms. That was where the, that was the room that had the sheep in it. Um, so you can see that th these are these are combined um, staff offices and teaching spaces. And so all of the rooms in in the house have, have got that same kind of sense of um, uh, just an appropriate feel. So when you're in the, I'm in the house or in the transition infill building or in the original 60s building, there, there's just this incredibly beautiful um, shift of mood of the different types of architecture and room types. Um, um, so it feels very a nice place for, for, for music, basically. That's, that's kind of what's happened.